as you know, at the weekend, it turned the 1st of uh, June, uh, which is, of course, Pride Month. And I thought to myself, right, how am I going to celebrate Pride Month properly? So I, I thought, I know, I'll attend the largest far-right rally Britain has had in the last few years. So I went off to London um, and we saw, um, as the as the Daily Mail is reporting here, this large Tommy Robinson um, protest uh, on the on on Saturday, on the first of first of June. Now, um, you can read the article if you like. Um, I don't think they like Tommy and us lot much, to be honest. Um, reading this thing, uh, they quote "Hope not hate," um, who say that there was between two and a half and three thousand people on the march. That was disagreed by the police, um, who said it's actually about ten times that. Um, and in addition, there was somewhere between half a million and a million people watching it live. Is this the mail? Yeah, this is the mail. They've, they've actually removed their comments on this because hmm. it was it was so universally um, rounded on by their own readers. Uh, they, they took the comments out. Who owns the but, mail group? I don't, I don't know who, who well, owns it. It's just uh, when I did my yeah. little piece that uh, got me in trouble with Hope Not Hate yeah. and deselected from reform. One of the things I mentioned that should go with like the Socialist Workers' Party, the Communist Party. And all journalists. The BBC, Channel 4, Channel 4. Yes. And the ma the mail group. Yeah. And no, people, people were yeah. like, wait, what? Like people like Toby <laughs> Young were like, what the mail group? What was the mail group done wrong? They're completely mainstream, yeah. aren't they? They're, no, they're just like all the rest. Yeah, they're yeah. just like all the rest. Oh, I mean, they run out of boomers sooner or later, anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, on, on on the crowd size, um, I mean, the, the, I mean, that's only a, a segment, so that's about a quarter of it. But um, Parliament Square can hold about twenty five to thirty thousand people, and in addition to that, you had huge numbers sort of milling around the edges as well. So I, I think there was easily thirty five thousand people there, and that, that's about what the police said as well. So um, yes, it was it was uh, it was well attended, and then all the sort of you know hundreds of thousands that were watching it online as well. Um, the Daily Mail also uh, <laughs> there, there was updates coming from the police throughout this as well. Um, and, and one of the lines that did make me chuckle from the Daily Mail article was uh, they shared that uh, the police put out a tweet at, at uh, quarter past two uh, in which they very, di very disappointingly said, while there haven't been any offences so far. And you sort of feel for them. They really wanted they really yeah. wanted to arrest people, but they couldn't do it. I saw something uh, this Saturday on yeah. Twitter. There was someone from the Hope Not Hate group who was oh, right. constantly posting. And at some point he said that a lot of people are uh, leaving now. So it's really funny if on the one hand he's texting that a lot of people are leaving now, it's a bit boring. Yeah. Then they go and portray it I, I in did, a sort I did have of a demonic look way. For the, um, for the uh, hope not hate people, because yeah. I thought, you know, it would be easy to find. They're the ones... Um, who look like they've got a trust fund and they're calling each other Sebastian and, um, <laughs> uh, you know, champagne or whatever. But uh, but I couldn't find them. Um, but anyway, so anyway, uh, what I wanted to what I wanted to do is because obviously uh, we were getting smeared um, on the media as being this sort of awful far right group. I thought I'd set the AI on it. So what I did is, is I went to the AI and I said, right, um, analyse all of the articles from Britain in the last couple of years and piece together from that what the policies that these awful, awful far-right people are in favour of. And it, and it sort of went away, it chugged around, and then it came back with something. And, and these are the things that these awful, awful far-right people, their, their sort of policy positions. So I'll start with um, uh, um, nationalism and sovereignty. They emphasise a national identity and cultural heritage. Outrageous. Yeah. Is there any chat GPT link on this? Oh no, I don't think I don't think there is. I don't think there is. I'm just I I made I made my own notes on this. Um, maintaining national sovereignty and opposition to international organisations. Sounds. I mean, that sounds all right to me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Immigration. Implement strict immigration controls and prioritise culturally similar countries. That makes sense. A bit weak, if anything. Enhance border security and deport illegal immigrants. Again, not going far enough, right? <laughs> yeah. So, right. Uh, uh, so th th this is, you know, this is this is the far right here. Uh, Euroscepticism oppose the European Union and advocate for independent trade agreements. Right. Nice. Law and order, um, anti-terrorism. Now that was a bit that got me because because all of it so far I was reading it and thinking yeah that sounds sensible and then I, then I found out that they were opposed to terrorism mm. 
How <laughs> dare you be opposed to terrorism? <laughs> I mean, what next? Rape? <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, uh, I, I, I thought that was all fairly sensible. Oh, yeah, and also um, economic and nationalism, uh, protectionism for local industries and reduced welfare state. Uh, I just want to quickly explain this. I might actually do a brokenomics on this at some point, but actually, yeah, you do want a little bit of protectionism. And the reason you want that is because we have regulations in this country. So we've got things like child labour laws, quite sensibly. You know, we don't want children working. But what that does is it means that in other countries that don't have child labour laws, they can produce stuff cheaper. Right. So all you do is you work out roughly what advantage it gives those other countries, and then you add that as a, as a sort of levy, as a custom for stuff coming in. Because otherwise, you're not lowering the total amount of child labour that goes on, you're just exporting it to somewhere else that will do it. Same thing with farming. Like we've got all you're these, lowering uh, it within it domestically. Yeah, so you, you're outlawing you're it domestically. But you're opening a market for yeah. it. Yeah. But, you're, but you're raising the cost of doing business in the UK. So fine, whatever, what, whatever the amount of regulation you impose on British businesses, whatever that cost increase is, you apply that as a, as a tariff for places that don't do that stuff. Quite sensibly, so I mean, take um, take um, farming for example. Like uh, we have lots of um, animal safety laws, uh, lots of laws on nitrates and other bloody stuff that affects farmers. Um, if we're going to do that stuff, and maybe that's all sensible, maybe we should do all of that stuff. You impose a tariff on stuff coming in from countries that don't do that stuff, so that you're balancing the playing field and you're not just exporting the problem that you're trying to stop to another country. All sensible stuff. So basically, this is traditional conservatism. Um, yeah, I mean, the cons well, I mean, not as not, a conservative not the Tory, party. Not the yeah, Tory party. Yeah, they, they go all over the is place. Philosophically yeah. speaking, traditional conservatism. Yes, yes. So I mean, there's nothing. Oh, yeah. And the last thing was um, uh, education and culture promote traditional values and resist progressive social policies. So that's what these awful, awful far right people stand for. Um, the opposition of progressive politics. Yes. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yes. So, ben, what do you say to sort of a laissez-faire libertarian who says something like, "People should be allowed to do everything"? Because I know you've yeah. got like libertarian leanings, like you want the tiny state. Yeah, the but I did grow out of it. But, but yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but like you know, if a company in Britain wants to use child labour. <laughs> For example, yeah, no, and no. there's children out there that are yeah. prepared to do the do the job. <laughs> it, what is it the business of the state to stop them from doing it? Yeah, to be fair, I did start work at 14. I just lied about my age and got a job, um, and I suppose that was my choice. But so, so I, I kind of see what you're saying. But but all the same, I'm not quite up for like toddlers up chimneys or anything yeah, like that. No, I'm not advocating yeah. for child. <laughs> <laughs> like slavery or labour or anything, just to be clear. Yeah. I just wanted your opinion yeah. on that. No, I was, I, I, if anything, I was being more value-free on that. I was I was basically kind of saying is if you are going to have all of these regulations that affect British businesses and that raises the cost of doing businesses, no matter what it is, whether it's bloody child labour or nitrate laws or packaging requirements or, or labelling or, or whatever it is, well, if you're going to increase the cost of doing business, put that as a tariff on stuff coming in from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I can yeah. represent the libertarian. They could say something like, when it comes to the workers and their criticism of syndicalism, they could say yeah. that unless you accept child labor, you are sort of uh, not accepting the the kids that want to work and want to <laughs> yeah. enter the market from an early age. But yeah, yeah, that's no, a, I, that's I, a I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to so much make this a mini brokenomics, yeah. but uh, yeah. but but yes, no, I, I just thought I'd Mr. Brokenomics yes. cannot make it about it. No, well, yes, I I, I just wanted to um, yeah share that actually um, this this far right label is being applied to basically everybody at this point, and actually all of the stuff on that list was perfectly sensible. Right, shall I share my photos? Um, oh yes, so um, boss man Carl, he did a speech. Um, at that thing there he is um, doing a speech and if you would like to hear it he's, he's stuck it up on his um, his Twitter um, so by all means go and check that out uh, and if you like the sort of stuff that um, Carl and us do then make sure you go to the merch store and you buy the Islander magazine um, because it's very good and it's not going to be available for much longer the first edition so, um, so, so, so buy it now so anyway while um 
while Boss Man Carl was, was, was giving his speech, I decided to go and have a quick reconnoiter around the area to see what was going on, to see if I could get a, a feel for, for what's going on at this thing. Were um, you dressed like that? No. Uh, <laughs> no, I, if, if I didn't even know about this thing until the, the night before and I was just expecting to head back, so I, I, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't um, decked out or anything. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm wandering around. Anyway, so, so that's, that's my photo of the crowd. It's a, it's a bit of a narrow segment, but you can sort of see the... Um, it was pretty densely packed and there's, you know, you could pan that all, all the way around and there's loads of it. Um, the excellent police uh, were walling us in. There we go. The, um, there's the police over Westminster Bridge, um, down Whitehall. Now, actually, at the other end of Whitehall, there were the, um, the, the Hamas lot, the, um, you know, the other side, the, 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 the yeah. pro-immigration chapter. Trafalgar Square. Yeah, they, they they were down at that end, and so so this was the heaviest police presence. I think there was a lot more police on the other side, actually, um, and every so often we could hear them sort of getting a bit. We well, know what they're like, getting a bit like that, and um, and, and and every so often you'd see uh, something come through on the radio, and and more and more of these guys would peel off and run up to the other end um, until there wasn't actually many left on that side. Um, and then there, I mean, just just the whole way around uh, Parliament Square, there there were sort of all of these police. And and I've got to say, actually, all credit to the police. Um, normally, there is violence at this sort of thing because the police start it, mm. um, and they behave themselves this time. It was very good. There was no baton charges, um, no overt aggression from them, anything like that. So. Um, well done, police. It's the election cycle, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, uh, d- Maybe to be, yeah, to be fair, so I remember the first lockdown protest, the police were really aggressive in that one. They, I mean, they were starting fights and baton charges and all sorts of things. And I think by the, by the sort of third and fourth lockdown protest, even police intelligence had worked out that something a bit fishy was going on. In fact, you're going to cover that in your segment, aren't you? Uh, which we which we might not put on YouTube, but um, uh, but, but but yes, and 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 also with the Tommy Robinson stuff again, they they've been a lot worse in the past, but again, I think police intelligence is starting to get to the point where they're like, oh, hang on, actually, these people might have a point, especially given what you're going to talk about in your segment uh, with the um, yes, you know, in the neck in Germany. Incident. So anyway, so so thank you to the police for not starting any trouble. I did have a word with some of them later on, um, and they had been briefed by their higher ups to expect trouble, um, but then it never materialised, um, which I'm sure the up the um, you know the higher ups weren't happy with. What a state of affairs, though, just in general, general comment that you have to keep Whitehall uh, completely free of people because there's two segments of society that can't be allowed yeah. near each other, right in the heart of London. Yeah. And, and one of those segments is English people, and the other one is is people who've turned up here and got a free house, and now want to kill us. So, how can anyone at this point uh, think that there's not a, a really bad problem? But there are still yes. plenty. I yes. know people, uh, quite a few people, that still really only get their news from BBC or Radio Four or something. Oh yeah. And don't think there's any problem yeah. if you or mention the Daily Mail online. It, yeah, right. Yeah. If you mention that the future holds sort of sectarian uh, horrors. Yes, uh, like, well, like the, the present holds it. The, right, yeah. that Britain could or will be some sort of balkanised type yeah. situation going on, and they yeah. look at you like, are you mad? Yes. There's still loads of people out there that uh, yeah, yeah. think like that. Like, yeah, yeah, w- yeah, worrying, isn't it? Um, is is one for you, Bo. So, with, uh, so, so Parliament Square... Is that Gladstone, uh, is it? No, that's, uh, that's Peel. So I like Peel. Okay. Peel's good. Is it, Peel's good, isn't he? Robert Peel, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, a good, he's a good yeah. guy. Yeah. So anyway, so Parliament Square is basically ringed by um, British heroes um, going around. So, there, so there's Robert well, Peel. Well, like... f- what? There's a few dodgy ones, aren't well, there? Well, let's have a look, shall we? Um, David Lloyd George. I mean, he was a statesman, I guess. A bit, bit more qualified at this stage, isn't it? H- history Historians are... Um... Uh, in two minds about David Lloyd George. Some yeah. love him, some despise him. Some look at him like a Woodrow Wilson type figure, like he was the beginning yeah. of the end. He done did some really, really terrible things. And others say, no, he was great. Yeah. Uh, so isn't that a case about most split. of them? Oh, well, yeah. But I was thinking, by today's standards, he's still by today's standard, he's quite sensible, and he, and he oh, was right. a statesman. So I'll, okay, I'll, yeah. I'll give him that. Okay. Um, Winston Churchill. Now, now he is, of course, our greatest. He-, he is our <laughs> he is our greatest hero because he stood up to the bad man in Germany, 
uh, because the bad man in Germany wanted to um, expel the Jews and uh, conquer Poland. And Winston um, absolutely demolished our empire, impoverished us for decades, uh, reduced our world standing, but did indeed stop the bad man from controlling Poland so that Russia could control it instead. <laughs> Um, and um, the expulsion could get upgraded to a, a holocaust, as history records. So so good one, Winston. Excellent work. British hero there. Um, and the final of the British heroes that I've got around Parliament Square is uh, Nelson Mandela. Now, mm. my history isn't so good, so it wasn't immediately obvious to me what Nelson Mandela's contribution to British history was. But I've got a historian on the panel, so you can let us know. Uh, well, well not, nothing's for British history. Right, okay. So, but, wait, um, but also, oh. he was, uh, you know, the a full, it, they are a full-blown company, the ANC are communists, aren't they? Oh, oh, yes, that, yes. And he went to prison. You know, uh, it was always free Nelson Mandela. Yes. Because he was in prison yes. in Robin Island for White 30 years. White attacks at train stations, yeah, killing... Well, hmm, why was he yeah. in prison? Hmm, was it yeah. just for being black or something? No, it's because he, he was the head of a militant right. terrorist organisation that, yes. that killed and bombed people, along racial lines as well, so... yes. So yeah, Nelson Mandela. Yeah, old, uh, you know, what, what one old lady and a and a granddaughter were blown away in a white phosphorus attack. So yes, yeah, so there was a. But anyway, he must have done something um, good for Britain because he's got a statue in Parliament Square. So I don't know what it is, uh, but anyway, so he, he, he gets a statue as well. Just an expression of yes. white guilt, isn't it? Now, on a, on a serious note, um, I also saw this. Uh, There's also a Gandhi statue in Parliament Square. Did you know that? Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, the crowd was quite thick, so it was difficult to move around. But uh, oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. Gandhi, really an enemy of the empire and. Well. And. Uh, an, yes. Uh, and. Uh, yes. Sort of uh, an, an idiot. He was. He was very friendly to young boys, I understand, though. So so maybe there were some good things about it. Now, anyway, um, very importantly, um, uh, free Sam Melia uh, were represented at this. And um, Tommy talked it about it as well, because uh, while this was all going on, Tommy was playing a, um, a documentary about the sort of state of Britain which you can probably find on maybe his website was always his Twitter or something, which he, which is worth checking out. But uh, yeah, so free Sam um, uh, Melia. Um, that, now that is important. Now, actually, I want to go a little bit deeper onto this one briefly, if I may, because um, as well as being a political prisoner, going to prison for committing no crime and for putting stickers up, which even the prosecution agreed are factually true... They decided that he must have bad thoughts in his head, and therefore he's he's a political prisoner in jail. Um, so I, di I didn't like that at all. Anyway, it gets worse. Um, I, I was communicating with um, Laura there in the picture. Um, he's now been banned from seeing or even talking about his children. Hmm. Yeah, I saw something on Twitter about that. Yeah, that that is out that is outrageous. So um, that, that's now bordering on sort of cruel and unusual, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So as well as being locked in his cell for 22 hours a day for having committed no crime, um, apparently the uh, probation services decided to add a note to his file deeming that he was a, a, a risk to children. And the excuse they gave was, uh, this, this is a result of offending behaviour and does not state he poses a direct uh, serious risk of harm to children, but the children being exposed to posters, insignia, literature and attitudes assessed as racist and offensive. So basically, they're worried that if he has access to children, they might turn out to be based. His own children? Yes. Right, yeah. So, so, in, it, it, so when, when um, Laura visits him, she can't even tell him um, about their, their new baby. I assume once he gets out of prison, it's... Yeah, uh, well, hopefully, well, not, I bloody well hope so. They're actually yeah. taking his children away. Well, I, I hope they don't do that, but I think, I, think I, mean, we need to, well, I think we need to push back on that. So first of all, he was in Leeds prison, and even though this note from the probation services was on his record, they, they recognised for what it was, which was complete bullshit, and they didn't apply it. So, he, so his children could go and visit him, and Law was at liberty to, to talk about the children. Then he got moved to Hull, and now they're not even, she's not even allowed to talk about the children or bring pictures or anything like that. So if one of the children gets ill, she's not allowed to mention it to him. Is this something that, for instance, this is something yep. that is uh, recognised as a right even to other prisoners? I suspect. Oh, it's, it's per perfectly normal family. for other prisoners. It's just, perfectly normal. It's, it's just standard cruel well, and unusual the, the punishment. Issue here, the, the real question here would be um, what 
they would allow people who would uh, do the equivalent from the other side. So if someone had posts of yeah. posters of Stalin and posters posters of the oh, well, they, well, they, they, oh, and they, stuff, they, they wouldn't go after them in the first place. But somebody on Twitter made an interesting point. There was this guy who oh this one of these weird alphabet people who. Um, who had done some very disturbing... Fi- no, no, he had been discovered with a lot of child porn and he lives opposite a playground and they didn't even pursue him. He, he's he's out living opposite that playground and he isn't deemed a risk to a child. But but this guy who quoted factually accurate stuff from the ONS is not, a, not is, is now deemed to be a risk to children. It's absolutely ridiculous. So so serious point here. If you, if you went to this thing on Saturday uh, and you enjoyed it or you didn't go... Um, but you wish you had have have a look at this website and i'm just going to uh yeah scroll down you can write to the prison um so you can at least do an email to that email address there um to basically say this is out of order or better yet and this is what i've done is you can physically write to the prison um and address it to the to the governor Sean Mycroft and basically let him know that this is ridiculous um now if you get and hopefully uh, Mr. Mycroft gets an awful lot of letters as a result of this uh, and other efforts that these guys are doing in order to um, to push back on this stuff. And if you if you end up watching this, Sean, um, I think you need to recognise that you've um, you have applied a rule incorrectly here. And I hope that you think again and you you reassess on this because I will quite happily come back to this topic um, uh, in future if necessary, because this is simply not on. You know, that, that can't be allowed. One further thing I mentioned, Sam's in jail for 22 hours a day and it's his birthday at the weekend. So if you want to send him a birthday card, do that. That will brighten his day a bit. Um, so, yes. Dark days that it's come to those in this country. Yeah, I, I can make a, a shrine to Pol Pot. Oh, yeah. And that would be fine. But a sticker saying no white guilt, that yeah. gets you in the slammer. And a T-shirt with all of them together, not just Pol Pot. It could be Mao, yeah. Stalin, Lenin, all of them together. Yeah, quite, yeah. quite. Very Five sad times indeed. The... Very sad indeed. But uh, <laughs> no, I had to mention that. Um, I'll also mention... Top chap here, Gerald Batten. Like that guy. Um, he, he's the best politician that we never had. Uh, this guy. So he he was, as you know, uh, running UKIP back in the day. Uh, Carl was a member. Um, I, I was a member back then. Tommy was a member. Now this Dank. Is, yeah, Dank. Dank was in it as well. Now this, this is my key thing. The amount of energy in that crowd, the amount of energy online of well-wishers, there was a huge amount of energy that is outside the system. And if the bloody UKIP NEC had not got rid of Gerald, mm. then all of that energy would currently be inside the system. Reform probably wouldn't exist. And all of, and at the moment we're talking about zero seats for the Conservatives, and we're not saying you know we're not saying vote Labour, we're not saying vote Reform, we're just saying zero seats for for all of them. You know don't don't engage in this political process. So all of that energy is now being directed outside of the system. If they just left left that guy in place all of that energy would be diverted into the system and the system would be much healthier as a result of it. But instead, um, through nefarious means, he was booted out, which means all of his energy is now outside the system. Do you remember there was a, a woman that was, I think, the chairperson of UKIP? There was some internal, there was an internal power struggle, wasn't there, between their their. Board. I, I think they sort of effectively had a board. Yeah, they're NEC. Yeah. Yeah, they're NEC. That's yeah. it. And um, I think it was. I can't remember her name now. But there was a woman. They just wanted. They just wanted to get rid of him for some reason. I'm mm. Not sure exactly why. And then the next leader after him. Do you remember him as well? Well, after him, it was yeah. Richard Brain, wasn't it? Yeah, Richard. And, Brain, and he yeah. lasted about two weeks, and then yeah. said it's impossible to do anything in this party because the NEC micromanage everything. Yeah. So he left as well. Yeah. And, and and today UKIP is absolutely nowhere. And it's mm. ridiculous because mm. if that hadn't have happened, Cole could be an MP by now. You know, or, or he could be at this coming election, given how disastrously unpopular the Tories are and about how there's no decent right wing party. So so he could be an MP uh, after the next election. Uh, maybe I could as well, maybe Dank, maybe Tommy. It's interesting to see how much UKIP has sort of imploded. Yeah, voluntarily. On itself. Or yeah, well yeah, yeah, yeah. in all sorts of ways. But how, yeah, it's sort of not committed suicide, but mm. it just made, like you say, all those power struggles with the NEC. Yeah. 
just sort of ruined itself. Yeah. And and if it wasn't for that, we would have a viable right wing party, you know, something akin to the AFD in Germany or, you know, some of these other places. But we for whatever reason we didn't go down that route and we are where we are instead, which I, I think is um, you know, really tragic. So anyway, uh, it was a great day out. Um, lots of positive energy there. My, my key takeaway is that we as a people are suppressed, but we are not defeated yet. Uh, in fact, I don't think we're going to be defeated. From what I saw there, um, you know, we have an indomitable spirit and that will remain, even though there's nothing that we can do inside the system at the moment. You know, we are an indomitable Peter. Uh, Peter, people, people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so then after after the lovely day out, I then went down to uh, Victoria Station where I was able to enjoy a big gay sandwich. For those of you listening, that is um, lettuce, guacamole, bacon and tomato, which they have helpfully branded LGBT in rainbow lettering. So, uh, so yes, lovely day out. It could be a GBLT. A How- BLT sandwich, having it in June. Who owns... Uh... It's a gay BLT sandwich. Oh, right, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, you're right. Yes. Who owns Marks and Spencers again? I don't, you don't worry me. about it. Don't notice. You right. shouldn't notice. Don't worry about it. Ah, right. Mm, okay. <laughs> and if you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go on down to lotuseaters.com where you can find Connor's series and the famed interview with Liz Truss. If you want to see what the mainstream media has been talking about in our interview... Make sure to check it out. And if you want to see what other work we're doing, you can also go to our Twitter account where we share links to everything else. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.